Good day and sweaty cub. Well, today at the Pattaya City Expat Club, we had a massive turnout because people are really interested to know about Bitcoin, this whole blockchain technology and everything. So just tell us a little bit about Bitcoin, how it started and why it's so big. Okay, Bitcoin started in 2009 by a guy named Hitoshi Nakamoto. Is that, tr to, is that true or is that still a rumor, unconfirmed? Um, supposedly it was a real person, but nobody knows exactly who he is. But he probably, if he still was legitimately around, he was controlled like, I don't know, million Bitcoin. Or he's got a whole bunch of Bitcoin because he did it at the beginning. So he'd be worth, you know, 10, 11 billion dollars or something. But there's all kinds of rumors of who he really is. But that's when it all started. And back in the early days, I know the first practical or well, maybe it's not so practical now but the first actual use of Bitcoin in commerce is a guy bought two Papa John pizzas for 10,000 Bitcoin which is now worth <coughs> 10,000 bitcoins 11 million bucks there you go the 11 million pizza is gonna go down in history so Dan Swartz here and you've been highly involved in this whole Bitcoin thing for a few years now what well, we say Bitcoin but of course blockchain currencies yeah, I first was introduced to cryptocurrency and Bitcoin back about three and a half years ago when a friend of mine said, oh, you got to look at this Bitcoin thing. And I said, oh, okay, I'll look. <clears throat> and it was like 300 bucks of Bitcoin. And I got into a mining group and I put in a little bit of money and got all my money back in way less than a thousand days. But that was my first introduction, but I still took a while to get my head around well, what the heck is this Bitcoin thing? Why is it worth something? But you have to think and change your paradigm. Why is paper money worth anything? Why is anything worth anything? Because people believe it's worth something, right? Yeah, people believe the government backs it and all that kind of stuff. Little do they know, U.S. dollars are a debt instrument. They're not an asset. So the amazing thing about this thing is that it's like transparent. So it sort of locks in the people at both ends. Yeah, well, one benefit of cryptocurrency, <clears throat> Bitcoin, and then all of the ones that have come after Bitcoin, because Bitcoin was the first, is something called a blockchain, which is just a fancy name for a special kind of database. But the key points of the blockchain is it's immutable, which means not changeable once a transaction is recorded, because it's distributed and it's on lots of computers. So you would have to have lots of computers all undo the transaction, which is kind of not going to happen. That means it allows you to have what's called trustless interaction, because I don't have to trust you because I know I trust the network. And then the piece you just brought up is, okay, I can go to a site, blockchain.info, and a number of other sites put in an address, my address, your address, if I knew it, and you give it to me to send you Bitcoin or the transaction ID, and up pops the exact transaction. It says, see, it was sent from here to here. It has two confirmations, and depending upon your provider, if you want to convert it back to money and change into a different account, they might say, I need three confirmations. It just means three computers confirm that this is correct. So, and people make the mistake of thinking this is a novelty that's going to go away, but it's not a novelty that's going to go away. No, it's not a novelty and it's definitely not going away because there are companies that are making it easy. It's not mainstream adopted because up till now, <clears throat> up till a couple years ago, it was relatively difficult to get access to buy, sell Bitcoin. I mean, if you had some computer skills or you had read a bit or learned a bit, it wasn't impossible, but it wasn't simple as I go to the store, whip out my credit card, <clears throat> and then I buy something. Well, now there are providers like in Thailand, coins.co.th. If you want to get some Bitcoin to use to hold it or to use to pay bills or to send back and forth, they've made a beautiful payments application that looks just like another bank account. So this is Dan Swartz. He's a friend of mine. He's been a friend of mine for quite a long time. He actually books speakers for the other expat club here. Uh, and to suck me in to give a lot of talks there. So Dan, just tell us a little bit about what you're doing and, and what your company's doing now. Sure, um, I run a company called 3T Networks. It's a US company, but we have worldwide operations spread all over. One of the main things <coughs> we do is educate people in this whole cryptocurrency space. And we help people to acquire it. We help them to grow it and we help them to protect it. So we teach, and then once they learn, they control their own assets, and then they know how to make them grow. And we have products that help them figure out when they should be in Bitcoin or when they should go to cash. We have another product that you can subscribe to that gets you access to mining capacity when you buy a certain amount of computer mining capacity that mines Bitcoin or Litecoin or other cryptocurrency. It returns every time it finds them. Everybody who's a member of the mining pool gets some money. And the last part of our product is we also analyze all these things called 
initial coin offerings, which are kind of like IPOs, and suggest which ones are good and which ones we're going to put our own money in as a company for our members who subscribe. And the ones that we don't, we say why, you can read the reports. And the ones that I wouldn't put your money in because they're not good, uh, we tell you those too. So I really suggest you have a look at the talk, I mean really, because you want to educate yourself about this and you won't find a more detailed and systematic introduction to the whole Bitcoin thing. So just quickly, a little tip, if leaving aside Bitcoin, what's one currency you think is worth buying, hold, buying to hold as a speculatory thing? Which one's good? Find one, well what I mentioned in the, in the talk, someone asked, put me on the spot, <clears throat> there's a couple of ones that I think are pretty good that are relatively mainstream, relatively easy to get on multiple exchanges and have a, a good use case and they're big. I mean, there's lots of really speculative ones that, are, that we analyze, but a couple of the big names that people know about Ripple XRP because it's owned by banks and banks use it as a huge settlement instrument. So that's been going up. Amisgo OMG, which is actually out of Thailand. Again, it has a banking type application. Another good one who I personally know the co-founder of is called IOTA, I-O-T-A, which is a, a micro payment capability because actually you buy them in the millions. Oh, wow. it, my, it's millions of IOTA because it's designed for the Internet of Things transactions, which as you know, uh, when all little thing, all these little devices in the world talk to each other and there's going to be micro payments, you need a cryptocurrency to do that. Now just one final thing, what is Bitcoin mining or altcoin mining? Okay, what is mining? Depending upon the kind of cryptocurrency you're talking about, some of them you can mine. All mining means is your computer is participating in the network, solving this cryptography, and if you solve it first, <clears throat> you get to make and carry the next block of transactions, and then you get rewarded with A, mining fees, transaction fees, and B, some amount of the cryptocurrency. So currently in Bitcoin, for instance, every time you find a block and you get to do the next block, you're rewarded with 12 and a half Bitcoin and the difficulty increases every four years approximately it halves so in four years a little bit less than four years maybe three years from now it'll take um, when you mine successfully a block you'll get six and a quarter Bitcoin instead of 12 and a half so a reward system was built into the Bitcoin system to encourage people to actually facilitate the tra transactions as it were. Correct. You, you need a reason to put your computer resources and pay the money for the electric bill. Because it's very electricity hungry, right? Yeah, Bitcoin is, yes. They, they say it costs about a thousand US dollars of electricity to mine a Bitcoin. Whoa, serious money. Well, they are a fascinating trend, new trend in the world of finance and really brilliantly explained by Dan. Really, thanks again, Dan, from myself and the Pattaya City Expat Club. We'll see you next week. Something completely completely different. We've got you know, words and music too. Barry Upton's going to introduce us to his new album and video project, Life's a Beach. But meanwhile, bye-bye from Ren. It's funny, Carbon, goodbye. Uh, and from another week at the Pattaya City Expats Club.